All right, well, I'm starting with a 12 by 16 hardboard panel uh, that I had already gessoed. And this is one I made from a big uh, sheet. And well, I have gessoed over it. I, I mean, I could maybe put another uh, layer of gesso on it. But I'm going to see about doing something quick abstract on it. Uh, but what I want to do is I'm going to maybe go over the whole board with a solid color. So I just need to decide uh, what I'm going to do on that and maybe get out my uh, color variations. Yeah, okay, so. so what the husband has out on the palette here is a little bit of yellow oxide. If you don't have that color, you can use any um, yellow that has a goldish tinge to it or a little bit of brown in it and he is saying that he just wants this as a background color on this painting which I don't know what it's going to be <laughs> is it an abstract or is it going to be I think it's a gonna, thing I think it's gonna be an abstract. he thinks it's going to be an abstract yes the paint is not talking to him yet so we don't know yet what it's going to be um, set out to do uh, any kind of uh, realistic type of thing, no portrait or anything like I'm that. Sorry. So, uh, I'm trying to film standing behind him. I just got elbowed. Uh, I'm just going to go I want to get this uh, using uh, just the... Uh, kind of making a frame out of The liquid out of that. Well, I'm just getting the edges. Yeah, the basics. He is using, give a shout out to Liquitex, the Basics set. This came with eight different colors, and you can kind of see them in there. The yellow oxide is out, but there's the rest of the colors. Yeah, and you, uh, you're going to add more. Right now, I just want to get, oh, I just don't want it being white at this point, so. I noticed that you like to have yellow as the background on a lot of your abstracts. I do. It's one of my more mm -hmm. favorite colors. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to probably have to put more of this. Mm -hmm. But one good thing about this is if you are trying to get like a wash, um, that this uh, Liquitex Basics uh, does a good job for that and it's you know not as expensive uh, as using um, well they have their their soft body line and sometimes even just wetting uh, the thing as I went on there before I showed that I was using um, a hard hardboard cover here and so you know, I'm not really too worried about lines or anything like that I just want to you're just um, blocking in some color here. Yeah, I just wanted to get okay. it on there. Uh, so I'm getting some shine from the light on here. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. While he's doing that, I uh, will show you. This is one of our works in progress here. This was a very small sketch that I had done in my sketchbook. And the husband enlarged it and said, well, let's go ahead and make a painting out of it. Much more vibrant because I was just using a very cheap set of colored pencils in my sketchbook. Well, we used so the basics there, too. Yeah, yeah, the yeah we did use ba the basic Liquitex on here. There are some things we have to correct on here. This is in no way done, but it's uh, it's most of the way there, 90% there. Yeah, a lot of people refer to the basics or the Liquitex basics as being... Um, you know, student quality paints, or uh, they are certainly less expensive, but they're uh, it's still a very good paint. Uh, it doesn't have as much uh, pigment as their um, heavy body or their soft body, and that's why they're a bit cheaper. But um, if you tend to do something large and you want to just get something like this covered, it's it's perfectly fine. Um, Get to, you, to the use the, over there. the basics. Yeah, well, for me, it's not so much about how much pigment is in the color, because you can always do several layers or coats if you need to. 
I am interested though in light fastness so that it, the colors would not fade over time. Being that I work in watercolor a lot, that's that's the main concern because yeah. On the one hand, I don't want to pay a lot for the watercolors. On the other hand, if I do something and it happens to come out wonderful, yeah, then worry, I don't want it to fade. You only have to worry about light fastness if it's going to be exposed to a lot of direct uh, sunlight. I don't know. I can't even read this anymore. But on the back well, we're of looking all, at the back on here. the back of all your tubes, though, first of all, one of the good things to look for is uh, for acrylics as compared to oils, it's always going to have the AP on here, mm -hmm. which means that they are non-toxic for the most part. Yeah, that's okay. one of the reasons I like it. If it says things. CP on it, that means it's toxic, and usually on oils you're going to find that. Uh, I don't know, these glasses may not be the best. I might need my magnifying glass to read it, but if you if you look at some of this stuff here, you're going to end up seeing uh, different different numbers and all and uh, different information. It's going to tell you... Uh, I'm going to get the white tube out and then I can see tell it you better. The pigment, it's going to tell you the pigment. No. Is it? Here you go. Should oh yeah, so see all this stuff on the back? That's what he's talking about. Yeah, it should tell you the pigment. I don't know, my glasses are fogging up. But, uh, it'll tell you the pigment. Uh, it'll tell you the pigment level. It'll tell you whether or not it's... Uh, Usually, whether it's transparent, whether or not it's opaque, or whether or not it's translucent. Uh, this being uh, titanium white, it should be opaque. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's where you're going to look at. So, somebody, somebody might call their white something else, but usually most of the stuff is titanium white in, in acrylic paints. There are other types of white. But whatever they end up calling it, What's universal among them is is the uh, the number description that they use. Because regardless of who manufactures it, they always have that um, same number on the back to represent the color. So they can call it something else. They like this one. They can sit here and call this one yellow oxide. It may be different than somebody else's yellow oxide. Yeah, it kind of looks like yellow ochre. Too. But what's going to be important is the numbers on there. Um, as far as what goes. If I could see it now, now which I can, I need to get my better glasses. Uh, but, you know, you're going to see in there, this one probably says something like PW, some, I forget what uh, titanium white is, but it's going to say PW, and other ones might have PO or something like that, and then, and then they're going to, those are the uh, typical uh, trade names for, for the pigment that that's used in them and that's that's a universal thing amongst all um what is it the a ASCM or something there's a national what is that like an artist association yeah it's an it's a national thing that they all comply or try to comply to and that they they, they meet that so now the good things about acrylics is like the husband said non-toxic they also clean up with water, unlike oils, which you would need turpentine or some other type of solvent to clean your brushes. Well, they are, they are also yeah. water-based, and that's yeah. why I got a thing mm -hmm. of water here, yeah. and then, you know... You uh, can dilute them down with a little bit of water as yeah. well. Yeah, I didn't really dilute it down with water, but I kind of made sure my brush was very, very wet, and, uh, you know, your brush, as long as you keep your brush wet, you don't have to rush and really wash it every time uh, mm -hmm. but you know you sit there if you want it to dry fast this is also something that you have to worry about is uh, some people will use hair dryers uh, there's really not too much wrong with that but what ends up happening is especially if you do end up getting up too much uh, water or whatnot and since this is a lower quality it could also be yeah. Hairs from the and brush that's, on that's there. That's going to be a uh, you know, special effect there. Yeah, yeah, special effects. Yeah, I intended that. Mixed media painting this yeah. will be. Yeah, but uh, what ends up happening is the acrylic on there, which is the binding component, um, if you end up adding up too much... You just need to brush the brush, as you can see. Yeah, this is an old one. This is mm -hmm. actually one of, one of your I old ones. It's a number. The it's a number twelve. <laughs> uh, I would assume it's a number twelve flat. Now, because this is bristle, it's it's a little stiff, and it will leave some lines here. 
and that's okay. If you wanted this to be smoother, you want to use a brush that feels softer. Well, I'm going to have to argue with her on that because with acrylic I paint, so. with acrylic paint, you generally always want a uh, a stiffer brush. Now, this is a flat, which is a lot more flexible. Uh, then you have ones that are just a little bit shorter. They look just like a flat, but th those are called brights, and they keep tighter. You want with acrylics though generally you, you want a stiffer brush because you want it to be able to move the paint but unlike if you with want water. It to be a smoother background you're gonna need a softer brush so no. that you don't leave the brush strokes. It's all about the brush strokes. It's all about the brush strokes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well yeah. I know even when you put on the gesso you like to have the lines in it. For well texture. yeah and, th and I can also I also get uh, if I wanted to you can get yeah. the, the textured yeah. uh, gesso which is a lot thicker. Yes, I did watch a video recently and I do not remember the name of the gentleman but he was putting gesso on with like a, a painter's putty knife to yeah. fill in the texture of the canvas because he liked a really smooth my surface favorite as well my favorite, yes you could my, use a spatula my favorite as well. abstract tool but These one days. of the drawbacks, I mean one of the good things, but also a drawback to acrylics is that they do dry very fast. If you want to do blending, you have to really hurry up and do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pause it there. Okay, what's going on here is um, paint is being diluted. There's just let's see, a little bit of the blue paint in there. And yeah. just a tiny bit of water at a time is going in. So that it can be mixed to a consistency. I'm going to use the same mixing stick. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's probably hard to see in there. Um, it's it's probably a little thicker than whipping cream. Well, what I'm going to do. You, you don't want it to be watery. Well, I can always add a little bit of paint to it, but mainly I want to get it mixed a little bit now. So. Yeah, let me see that blue. It would be easier to see on the camera. Okay, so you can sort of see it's it's thick. And I believe he's going to pour this stuff yep. is where this is going. Yep, yep, and yep. so far we have white and blue. Now he's working on the red. Yep. That's a little bit. We're just going to try it. See what happens. That's what they make gesso for. <laughs> you can see we're using a very small spoon, so there's not a lot of water that's being that mixed to be with this. You, you don't want to, definitely don't want to go over a 50-50 mix, okay? Uh, but um, probably better to make sure mm -hmm. since I'm just using straight water and not any kind of a acrylic medium that that has acrylic in yeah, it. Yeah, they do have some kind of um I don't know what the name of it is, fluid that you can add to the paint that makes it a little thinner, also makes it dry slower. Well, that's slow flow stuff, yeah. but um what I would do if I wanted to do this with and 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 you know, that I'm making it on my own and if I wanted to make sure that I didn't end up suffering from underbinding. Underbinding will happen when you have uh, too much water in there and there's not enough of the uh, acrylic uh, to uh, adhere to, to each other. So then your paint will actually uh, peel off and, well, that will be problematic. Uh, okay, so how are you going to do this? Well, right now i got to get yellow. Oh, well. All right. there. Okay, so we have white, blue, red, and yellow that have a little bit of water added to it to thin them out. Now, sometimes now, what have I have done is I've used it actually from this a paper towel. Is, okay, paper towel tube that's been cut down to about well, two and a half, three inches. Yeah, and you can pour your paint in, in now, that. Are you using the cut side or this... I don't know which side is which. This actually. is the side that looks like it's. But well, we're going to try cut, that so. this time with a with a little a little cup. So I have to decide which of these I want in my cup 
first. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this red in here. Try to get all the red out. It's okay if some of this gets on there. I'm not worried about that either. And actually we'll probably splatter some of that onto the uh, painting. Now we'll go ahead and do the yellow. Okay, this is being poured into the same cup. Well, in, uh, this is another clip I did not, the one that I mixed them in. The, the yeah. I'm going to move that so I can see in there. Okay, okay. There we go. Red. Because you're not mixing it, so these colors should sort of I'm gonna add the keep white to themselves. Now. They're not going to really They're blend right. together. Okay. That white is thicker, I guess. It's I coming think it's out. kind of dried. <laughs> oh my goodness! You gotta hurry up. Then. Oh, white's always got a higher. Yeah, like this, a little more red. White's always oh, got a higher. Sorry, sorry. White's always got a higher pigment. So, like, if you're mix, if you're mixing uh, colors, and you have one that a color that's more translucent. Mix it with white and it'll cover better. Yeah, it'll tone it down, but it's going to cover. You always need like 10 times more white than any other color well, because you both use it to, I don't know, give like a body to the other colors. No. No. You didn't do blue yet. The and uh, also uh, because you use white so much. If it's in landscapes, you got, you know, clouds, you got water. White just seems to be used a whole lot more than right. any other and color. And also, typ typically with a, a acrylic, once acrylic is dried, you can. You better hurry up! It's all going to dry in that I'm cup. getting there. I'm getting there. You can. Uh, you can cover over with another color, but sometimes when you get a transparent or translucent color, it's not good enough. So you know the area that you want to cover with a lighter color. You can just go over that area with white <laughs> and it will cover whatever is there so all right. so now once we get all that get my little mess what we're going to do is just take a cup over here and take my little board uh, let me come around behind oh you still going mm, coming around behind you hang on hang on hang on hang on Alrighty. So we got that mix in there like so, see? And we're going to just take it onto here like Whoop. this. Okay. And then I'm going to take go. it out like that. And then, well, it's just there. Oh. And then now what I'm going to do is just kind of move it around. Oh, it's beautiful. Check that out. If you're as old as I am and you remember widgets, this is exactly what they looked like. Oh, I like that. You don't do too much, you're going to lose all those beautiful colors. Alright. Look at that. Beautiful marbling. And you just take the cup and uh, the other ones there and just kind of Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just get whatever. You, you really want a drop cloth or some newspaper or something underneath the canvas you when know, you do uh, this. Only necessary if I'm where. So, now that we have it like Look that. This. I love that area right in there. See, you see how important the uh, yellow background is now? Huh? Yeah, that wouldn't have been the same on white. That might look good on a black background, too, if you used lots of light colors. So what I can do is I can let that dry. Right here. I love that area right there. Well, what I'm going to do is now I, that. I'm going to let that go. I really like that. And then since I have all these cup marks here, I'm going to do another batch of it and I'll put some of it here and just kind of let it come out. And this is going to have to be completely dry 
And like in this area here, you can see the paint is much thicker, and that's going to take a while to dry. Yeah, unless you go with uh, a dryer, which, you know... Even so, you need to be careful if your paint is on thick. It could be surface dry, but if you go over it with a brush, what's underneath is still wet and it will smear. When in doubt, just leave it alone for a day and let it dry completely. This is very nice. I like the way that came out. It's very interesting.